Now in terms of Hellenistic sculpture, they're again expanding on those classical ideas and we're going to look at some of the freestanding sculpture that they create. We're going to start with the most famous and probably the most enigmatic of the Greek sculptures, the Venus de Milo. Now she has some interesting history behind her because she is found on a rubbish pile by the French during the Napoleonic Wars, early uh, 19th century. So we don't have any context. We don't have the temple she came out of. We don't have a lot of additional information on her. We don't even have her arms. And she was going to be burnt. The reason she's on a rubbish pile is she was going to be burned in a kiln to be made into lime because when you heat up marble to a, not, to a high enough temperature, it breaks down into calcium carbonate, which is basically lime, and you use that to make cement. So you see where people are again recycling goods from the ancient world. So the Venus de Milo is actually larger than life size. And she's modestly draped, which gives a certain overt sexuality to her. Sort of like people wear lingerie uh, to seduce their significant others, rather than being necessarily fully nude, she's doing the same thing, where we have the clothing brought down to her waist, just above the pubic bone. So it creates a very interesting image. We also see that she has quite an S-curve to her. The interesting thing about the Venus de Milo is they're starting to apply those ideas of idealization of the male form to the female form. So from the front, we get this idea of the S-curve kind of coming down this way and around. And then from the back, we have the same thing. Or from the side, sorry, we have the same thing. And that S-curve draws us in. It makes it that much more interesting to look at, to gaze upon. And when we see it from the side and the front, it creates this feeling of almost a spiral of humanity uh, as we look at her. Now, she would have also been painted. I should say something about the arms. We don't know what happened to the arms. They... One of the theories is that they were broken off and these drill holes here are simply there for an arm, uh, a piece of jewelry, but the arms may have been broken off. She was probably holding a golden apple. That's about all we know because she's Aphrodite. That goes back to a story in the Iliad, the Judgment of Paris. Uh, it's also possible some have theorized that her arms were ivory just like the statue of Athena Parthenos in the Parthenon, and that the rest of her might have been clothed at various times. She would have, as I said, been painted, and this is based on what we see on the sculpture. There are microscopic remnants of paint on the sculpture, so we're not making this up. And when we talk about the idealization, it is very possible that she was originally split, just like the male sculptures, into a tense leg, a resting leg, uh, probably a resting arm, and a tensed arm. But because we're missing the arms, we're not entirely sure. So the importance here is that they're idealizing the female form. This is cosmopolitanism in the Hellenistic world. They're becoming more accepting of women because that's what we see amongst the Persians and some of these other groups that the Greeks have run into is a much greater acceptance of women than we see in the ancient Greek world where women are property there to uh, breed. In fact, it becomes tabloid news if you fall in love with your wife. That's what you're supposed to do with your girlfriend. Uh, and this is just the way the Athenians and much of the Greek world works. Now, you would think with all this idealization, we're going to be looking at a lot of beautiful bodies, beautiful men, beautiful women, or Voldemort's mom. This is the old market woman. And here we've gone in a very different but very interesting direction. What I want you to think about as we look at her is what's more difficult 
creating, drawing, sculpting a young figure or an old figure? Well, the young figure is pretty simple. Most young people have roughly the same features. There's a couple of minor adjustments, but all the skin in between is firm and simple to sculpt. Everything connects with fairly, a fairly tight feel. As the human body ages, we get wrinkles. And if I sculpt someone with the wrinkles in the wrong place, or I put the age spots in the wrong place in a portrait, it no longer looks like that person. It means there's more detail and more things that need to be perfectly positioned. So the elderly tend to be much more difficult to depict than the young. And here we know that she's an old woman, partially because the title is Old Market Woman, which is usually a pretty good giveaway. But also we have a little bit of wrinkling in her neck as well as in her face. We have her hunched forward. Uh, this arch to her back is a symbol of age. We see a sagging breast. Sagging breasts are always a symbol of either a mother or the elderly going back to ancient Egypt. So we do have a sense of significant age here. We can imagine a woman in her 70s or 80s, which is not necessarily entirely rare in the Greek world. And this whole piece becomes a symbol of the cos cosmopolitanism of the Hellenistic world. Again, an acceptance of other people who aren't, you know, the Greek perfect form, that male form that we've been looking at. Now, as we look at as a sculpture, it's very interesting because it follows the same rules that we saw for the men. Again, I can cut her into four pieces. And what we have is the tensed leg, the relaxed leg, the tensed arm, which you can imagine kind of moving forward as she hits someone with her handbag, uh, trying to get them out of the way. And, oh, sorry, this should be the relaxed arm and the tensed arm, which we can see from the shoulder and the musculature here. Drawing those ideas in, she's in a position of contrapposto, and we have that S-curve running through her, drawing us in to look at this sculpture. And incidentally, we know it's Voldemort's mom because she can levitate her groceries. Really quite remarkable. Now, she was probably part of a larger public display. I'm going to erase. There we go. Uh, she was probably part of a larger public display. And these displays were not uncommon. You could have five, ten uh, sculptures all together depicting something, sometimes depicting everyday life, as we see here. She's not a hero. She's not fighting gods. She's just at the market. Uh, we see a figure that's naturalistic, old, and highly detailed, and yet completely anonymous. We have no idea who she is. Is she the artist's mom? Is she a woman who uh, met the artist on the street? We don't know. But we do know that it's a really remarkable piece. The more you look at it and look past the fact that it's a depiction of the elderly, the more you see how remarkable it is and what places it on the same level as the Venus de Milo and the Spear Bearer and the scraper.